let us look into some actual questions in statements and assumptions. Normally, the questions in statement assumptions will be like this. There will be a statement and below that, there will be two assumptions. You will have to uh, say uh, which of the statement, which of the assumption is implicit or true. You have to choose one if the assumption one is implicit or valid. You have to choose two if only assumption two is implicit or valid. You have to choose three if either one or two is implicit. This is the case, you know, uh, three is the case of investments, which I talked about. Then you have to choose four if neither one nor two of the assumptions is implicit. And you have to choose five if both assumptions are valid or implicit. This is the way you have to choose. Now let us see an actual question. This question is taken from State Bank of India PO exam. The statement says, private property trespassers will be prosecuted. A notice on a plot of land. Assumptions are the passerby may read the notice and may not trespass. Assumption 2 is people are scared of prosecution and therefore may not trespass. Which of the two assumptions are valid? That is what you have to find out. Now let us go into the mindset of the person who created the advertisement. Okay, who, who, who created this notice? Private property trespassers will be prosecuted. Why this notice? Is, he takes a lot of pains to prepare this notice and put it up. He is doing it under the assumption, those who read this notice will read it and then they will, they will not trespass. Therefore, the first assumption, the passers-by may read the notice and may not trespass is valid. Second, the people are scared of prosecution and therefore may not trespass. Again, why the word, the word trespassers will be prosecuted is added in the notice. The person who created the notice has purposefully added the word prosecuted. The idea behind it is that those who read it will be, will in their minds, a fear of prosecution will be instilled and they will be uh, refraining from trespassing into the property. Therefore, this is also a valid assumption. Therefore, for this question, the answer is 5, which means both assumptions are valid. Now, let us look into the next question. Question number 2. This is taken from Canara Bank PO exam 2003. What is the statement? The statement says, the government has decided to levy 2% on the tax amount payable for funding drought relief programs. What are the assumptions? What is a drought? There is no rain. As a result, people are suffering. Agriculturists are suffering. They have to be given some relief. So the government has decided to levy 2% on the tax amount payable. Agree. Now what are the assumptions which we have to test? Assumption 1. The government does not have sufficient money to fund drought, re drought relief program. Assumption 2. The amount collected by way of surcharge may be adequate to fund these drought relief programs. These are the two assumptions we have to test and tell whether they are valid or not. Now, let us look at the statement more closely. We have a key word here. The government has decided. Decided is the key word. How a government will decide? Normally, they will appoint a few people to go into the problem. They will discuss and they will come to a conclusion. They will go into the merits, the demerits, pros and cons of the problem. Then finally, they will come to a conclusion. The conclusion will be approved by the government and the government will then decide. Now, the key word decided is given in the statement. That means all this process has already been over. Why they have levied a tax of 2%? Because the government does not have enough money for drought relief. That is the very reason they have gone about the whole elaborate arrangement of charging 2% levy. Therefore, assumption 1, the government does not have sufficient money to fund drought relief is valid. Otherwise, the whole thing would, be, would not have been undertaken. The whole exercise would not have. Suppose the money, government had enough money, why they go for levying tax? So, the very fact they have gone about very um, levying the tax proves the government does not have enough money and therefore, the underlying assumption 1 is valid. 
Then number two, the amount collected by way of surcharge may be adequate to fund the drought relief programs. Now, the government, the keyword I again, as I told you, is decided. How they would have decided? Suppose the government had estimated the uh, amount that they will collect by way of levying 2% tax, 2% levy is 1 crore. And the amount that they need for drought relief is 25 crores. Will the government uh, get into this exercise? The very fact that the government has gone into this exercise and has implemented means that they have considered the probable revenue sources and the probable uh, expense sources and because it is matching they have gone about uh, they have gone about and decided to levy a tax of 2% a levy of 2% on the tax therefore assumption 2 the amount collected by way of surgical, uh, surcharge may be adequate to fund the drought relief program is also a valid assumption Therefore, the answer for this question is question 5, which means both assumptions are implicit. Now, let us go to the next question. Question 3. It is taken from United Bank of India, PO exam 2009. The City Transport Corporation has introduced air-conditioned buses on various routes to attract people traveling to their workplace by car and hence reduce congestion on the roads. The City Transport uh, Corporation has decided to uh, introduce air conditioned buses, air conditioned buses so, thus people who, so that people who are traveling in the car uh, will uh, keep their car in the uh, home and they will get in, they will start using this uh, facility which will reduce congestion. Okay. Now what are the underlying assumptions? Majority of the people may still prefer to travel to the workplace in their own cars. That is assumption one. The second assumption is many people may opt for these buses for traveling to their workplace. Now these two assumptions are contradicting each other. Now let us look at assumption one. Majority of the people may still prefer to travel to the workplace in their own cars. Can it be a valid assumption? Suppose the team that has gone into this, the government has introduced, the city transport corporation has introduced, after uh, the deliberations, the team that has deliberated, suppose they found that majority of the people will not use this, they will keep, they will continue to go in their own cars, would they have introduced this new scheme? No, therefore assumption 1 is not valid. The key word here is majority. This cannot be assumed. Majority is a very strong word. It cannot be assumed that majority of the people will still prefer to travel in their own car. It cannot be assumed. Therefore, assumption 1 is not valid. Then, assumption 2. Assumption 2 says many people may opt for these buses for traveling to their workplace. Whenever any new scheme is introduced, a new announcement is made, there is an un the underlying assumption is the readers and the users will make use of the facility. That is why it is introduced. The very fact the city corporation has introduced uh, air conditioned buses is under the belief that many people will opt for this service. It is an underlying assumption. Therefore, assumption 2 is valid. So, the answer to question number 3 is, answer 2, that is only assumption 2 is implicit or valid, assumption 1 is not implicit. Let us go to the next question, question number 4. This is an advertisement, we have to be very careful, otherwise we can go wrong in interpretation. Buy our brand of X cars as they are made with superior German technology and advertisement for car. What are the underlying assumptions which we have to test? One, cars with German technology are better than other cars. Number two, many people may purchase X brand cars based on the advertisement. These are the two assumptions we have to test. Now let us take assumption one. Cars with German technology are better than other cars. I may not agree. According to me, cars with Japanese technology are better. But as I told, 
wherever there is a case of advertisement, remove your personal bias. Let not your opinion contaminate the statement. Remove your personal bias. Get into the framework of the advertiser. Get into the shoes of the advertiser and think. The advertiser says, buy our X brand cars because it has superior German technology. The advertiser thinks that because of the superior German technology, their cars are better. Therefore, within the framework of the advertiser's mindset, assumption one is correct. Cars with the German technology are better than other cars. That is the mindset of the advertiser. That is the assumption on which the advertisement has been made. Therefore, it is a valid assumption. Number two, many people may purchase X brand cars based on advertisement. As I told earlier also, when any advertisement is released or when any, any scheme is introduced, the underlying, underlying assumption is many people will go for it, will make use of the facility. That is an underlying assumption. That is why it is, first of all, introduced and implemented. Therefore, assumption 2 is valid. So, both and for this question, uh, both assumptions are valid. So, the answer is 5, which means both assumptions are valid. Now let us go to the next question. This is taken from Union Bank PO exam 2011. What does the statement say? The number of people living below poverty line in urban areas has increased since last year. It is a, it's what we see everywhere. Number of people living below poverty line in urban areas is increasing day by day. Lot of poor people are coming from uh, villages to city and that number of people below poverty line is increasing. Okay. What is the assumption? People living in rural areas are not below the poverty line. Second assumption, a similar survey was conducted last year. Now, as I told you, you have to read the statement and the assumption very carefully. The statement is talking about people living below poverty line in urban areas. It is not saying anything about people living in rural areas. It does not even whisper about rural areas. But assumption one says, people living in rural areas are not below the poverty line. But it is very far-fetched. It has nothing to do with the statement. The statement is talking about people living in the urban areas. The assumption is talking about people living in the rural areas. Therefore, no connection whatsoever and it cannot be assumed. Obviously, cannot be assumed. Therefore, assumption 1 is not valid. Now, let us come to assumption 2. A similar survey was conducted last year. Now, let us go to the statement itself. What does the statement say? The number of people living below poverty line in urban areas has increased since last year. How they know? They have data for the last year. They have data for the current year. They have compared both the data and they say the current year, the number of people living below poverty line has gone up. So, this is possible only when you have data for both years. If you should have data for both years, for both years the survey must have been conducted. Therefore, a similar survey was conducted last year is a valid assumption. So, assumption 2 is valid. Assumption 1 is not valid. What you have to learn from this is, you should read the statement and the assumptions very carefully. Here that urban-rural divide is brought about and if you are not very careful, you will miss it. So, the correct answer is uh, option 2, which says only assumption 2 is implicit.